Hello everyone! Welcome back to Airdash Academy. So now that we're done with various general technicalities about the very process of learning, we can move on to talk about some actual fighting games now. We'll be demonstrating many things through the design of Guilty Gear, but later episodes will cover other games as well to address the specific aspects that work differently in those titles. The ability to cancel moves into each other and create chains of attacks in Air Dashers are not just there to provide you with flashy combos. The chains are also a crucial part of the tactical aspect, and we're going to show you exactly how. The reward you get from chains usually depends on either one or both of two main principles. One, position. Two, commitment. Position is the easier to grasp of the two, and we'll start by demonstrating it in an extremely simple way in Street Fighter. So let's say you have two scenarios where your opponent whiffed a Dragon Punch and you are 100% sure you are going to hit with your punishing attacks. What do you do in each scenario to maximize your gain? When you are really close to the opponent, you can do Close Hard Punch cancelled into a Dragon Punch for the biggest damage and the knockdown. But at farther ranges, this won't work. Only Close Hard Punch can be cancelled into special moves, not Far Hard Punch. And at farther ranges, a Dragon Punch won't reach. You'll have to settle for Crouching Medium Kick into a Fireball. So the closer you are when you attack, the better your offense can be, not only through better combo routes on a hit, but, as we're about to see, with more pressure options on block. Now let's look at Guilty Gear. Each character has a variety of normals, some of which have very long range, and some with very short range. But if you pay close attention, you'll notice that many of the shorter normals grant bigger rewards when they connect. Not only does this affect them as starters, but it also changes the tactical properties of the moves that are cancelled into them. For example, if you hit with Souls 2S at its max range, it remains a simple poking tool, but if you hit with it much closer, which is a harder task to accomplish in a match, you can cancel into a sweep and gain a better reward, a knockdown. In addition, Soul can't launch the opponent out of a simple ground chain without plenty of super meter to burn, but if you are close to the opponent and in the corner, the short ranged 6P can now be used to access bigger combos. Most characters have a far S and a close S as two different moves. Far S attacks are usually used as poking tools, and the close S variations require you to be very close to use but offer various benefits. They can be cancelled into plenty of moves and sometimes even to a jump on block, giving you more options for both combos and pressure. Some of them leave you at plus frames on block, like chips, forcing additional pressure. Venom's Close S is another great example of a move that offers plenty of benefits on both hit and block. And let's not forget that close positioning also gives you the option of mixing throws into your offense. So in short, if you can get really close to the opponent while keeping the momentum so you'll be the one doing the attacking, you'll be rewarded more. Now let's talk about the second principle, commitment. This is a word we like to use since it conveys the idea behind it very well. Imagine in Street Fighter that you are at point-blank range as the opponent does something unsafe. In one situation, you're sure you are going to score a hit, so you'll do Close Hard Punch cancelled into a Dragon Punch for maximum damage and a knockdown. But consider a second situation where you're only 50% sure you'll hit. Are you willing to take a risk and commit to a Dragon Punch, which may be blocked and punished? Probably not, so you'll compromise on doing a Hard Punch into a Fireball instead. Lesser reward when it hits, but you'll be better off in the worst scenario. That is exactly what we mean with the word commitment, the situation you'll put yourself in when things don't go as planned. Air Dashers have many scenarios of commitment, but commitment doesn't have to take an extreme form such as having an unsafe move blocked. The most common punishment is loss of offensive momentum. Let's watch an example. Soul can run up and attack in a variety of ways and from plenty of different ranges, but for now we'll compare between two specific ones. Option number one is a close range 5k cancelled into 2s. Option 2 is a close range 2D cancelled into a gun flame. 5k 2S is what we'd call a low reward, low commitment chain route. If it hits, you can confirm into a 2D for a knockdown and some minor damage. But if blocked, you're still in a pretty good position, since 2S leaves you at frame advantage, and you used it very close to the opponent, so you can keep applying pressure or maybe even a mix-up. On the other hand, 2D gun flame is one of Soul's main high commitment, high reward chain routes. If it's blocked, Point Blank Gun Flame leaves you at a frame disadvantage and pretty close to the opponent, so you give them the momentum to attack afterwards. If you hit, the Gun Flame hits off the ground, so you barely get any damage and you don't get a knockdown. But in the case of a counter hit, you'll be rewarded with huge damage. Commitment is also backed by mechanics like proration, where smaller, faster, safer to whiff moves lead to less combo damage compared to slow, heavy combo starters. So to summarize the two principles, one, closer equals better. Two, bigger commitment leads to bigger rewards. 
Now, you might have noticed that our examples are all pairs of moves. That's because you can't react fast enough to a single one-hit move. You always have to commit to an additional action afterwards as well before you can even tell what's going on. So to play Air Dashers better, you must stop thinking about individual moves and start thinking about pairs. At high level play, a character's move list doesn't really consist of normals and specials, but instead various chain routes. Soul's Far S into 2S is a distinct move, and Far S into 5H is another move. Both of those moves have similar startup, but the rest of their aspects are different. At closer ranges, Far S into 2S is always better. It leads to more damage on hit, more options to continue the combo, and on block leaves you at an advantage. Far S into 5H leads to less damage and is disadvantageous on block, but at farther ranges every option gives a different benefit. Far S into a whiffed 2S gives very small reward on hit, but it's good on block to keep pressure. And Far S into 5H ends pressure when blocked, but can still, if it hits, net a solid reward, even at this range. Second example, 5K2H and 5K2S. Both have similar cancel options on hit, but you can replace 2S's advantage on block with 2H's ability to catch jumpers. Third example, 2S Wait and 2S 2D. Waiting after the first move is also an option, which in this case sacrifices the reward on hit for pressure. In short, you have plenty of options, usually differing according to the ranges where they work, and how much momentum you're willing to sacrifice on block for bigger rewards on hit. Just make sure to learn about the vast array of options you have so you'll be able to make more nuanced decisions in the match. This is very similar to 3D fighting games, where you pick the move you use next based on the situation you want to cover. So you can choose between a move that beats low blocking and backdashing, and a move that beats high blocking, sidestepping, and high interruptions. By differentiating between all the possible two-hit combinations the character is able to perform with an Air Dasher's chain system, you can make your seemingly small move list bigger, more nuanced, and suitable to handle different situations. That's it for today's episode. Subscribe and tune in for the next episode where we'll cover other important concepts.